Good evening, and welcome to this, the uh, December 10th meeting of the Livermore City Council. Uh, I now call the meeting to order. Uh, let the roll call show that all members of the council are present and accounted for. Uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, first thing on the agenda, uh, we have the uh, confirmation of advisory body appointments and reappointments. Uh, that would be uh, for the Beautification Committee, Cynthia Dake, Commission for the Arts, Robert Gaussman, uh, Manya Lane, Elizabeth McWhorter, Historic Preservation Commission, uh, Barbara Savoy, uh, Human Services Commission, Olivia Angus, uh, the Livermore Area Youth Advisory Commission youth member, Mariah Chowdhury. Uh, and for the Livermore Housing Authority, uh, the reappointment of Wanda Hunter and Mark Palajak. Uh, do I have an motion? I'll move we accept the no <coughs> nominations. Is there a second? I'll second it. Uh, seconded by uh, Councilmember Coomber. Uh, motion made by Councilmember uh, Carling. Uh, any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, carries unanimously. Thank you very much for uh, uh, stepping up and volunteering your time. Are we going to, is there anyone here to uh, issue the, okay. If you, uh, those members that I just rattled off your names, if you please come up and uh, uh, receive the oath of office. Very good, thank you. You all look familiar? <laughs> Thank you for all of your time and efforts. Greatly appreciate it. Again, thank you for volunteering your time. Greatly appreciated. Uh, okay, this is uh, some mixed emotions. I have the uh, uh, I have a proclamation uh, honoring a uh, uh, council member who had the good sense to not run this year <laughs> to uh, avoid those slings and arrows, and uh, it was uh, it truly it was a battle, and it really was, and. Uh, um, but you uh, not only served this council and this community uh, and also uh, uh, saw to it that the election process uh, was carried through and the uh, uh, truth was carried out there uh, throughout the community. So it's uh, greatly appreciated and it's, uh, uh, I have truly uh, enjoyed serving with you uh, on the council. Uh, we haven't always agreed, but I think that's a good thing because it uh, invites uh, more discussion and the uh, uh, results are always better when it's uh, collaborative. So uh, with that, uh, a proclamation of the City of Livermore honoring Stephen Spadowski, December 10th, 2018. Whereas Stephen Spadowski, a California native, yay, uh, born and raised in the East Bay and since 2000 has lived in the City of Livermore with his family. Stephen holds a bachelor's degree and a master's of public administration from California State University, Hayward. <laughs> and where uh, my alma mater as well. Uh, whereas Stephen has over two decades of experience working in the public sector in the fields of municipal finance, transportation, 
environmental compliance, information technology, public outreach, and open space management, which is why you're a tremendous resource on this council. Uh, whereas prior to his election to the Livermore City Council in 2014, Stephen Spanowski was an active member of the Livermore community, completing the Livermore Citizens Police Academy program and serving on the Beautification Committee and the Planning Commission. And whereas Councilmember Spadowski supported the preservation of Livermore's unique character and quality of life. As a council member, Stephen spoke focused on preserving open space, public safety, promoting the arts, advocating for good governance, and supporting the revitalization of the downtown. And whereas during his tenure, Councilmember Spadowski served on the Livermore Amador Valley Transit Authority, where he used to work, <laughs> uh, the Livermore Regional Traffic Authority, the Tri-Valley Transportation Committee, Livermore Dublin Liaison Committee, and League of California Cities East Bay Division Committee. He also served as Vice Mayor in 2017. Whereas the City of Livermore recognizes the significant time spent away from his family and acknowledges the sacrifice that they made as Councilmember Spadowski served our community. Too often the family members are forgotten because this takes a tremendous amount of time. Now therefore the City Council of the City of Livermore honors Stephen Spadowski for his service and contributions to the Livermore community and wishes him well in the future. And there's more. Uh, we just delivered, uh, just moments ago, uh, a proclamation, uh, a recognition, a certificate of recognition uh, from the State Senate, uh, recognizing Stephen Spadowski, uh, and this is from Senator uh, Glazer. Uh, Stephen Spadowski has committed four years of dedicated service on the Livermore City Council, and it is appropriate to highlight his many achievements and accomplishments and extends special recognition to him for his civic leadership. And whereas Stevens' service to the Livermore City Council has been commendable, first elected to the Livermore City Council in 2014, and whereas during Stevens' service on the City Council, Livermore has prioritized using public <laughs> dollars efficiently by preserving open space, reducing traffic congestion, supporting our downtown, promoting arts programs and supporting public safety. And whereas Stephen has continuously given back to the community through his commitment to family, profession, and civic duty through his membership on the board of directors of the Tri-Valley San Joaquin Regional Rail Authority, LAVTA, Livermore Planning Commission, and the Beautification Committee, be it resolved by Senator Stephen M. Glazer that Stephen Spadowski of Alameda County, California is commended and recognized for his commitment to the Livermore City Council and beyond. And it's signed Stephen M. Glazer, California State Senator, 7th District. So the recognition goes far and wide. So thank you very much. Uh, you want to say a few words? Sure. Um, I I'm glad my last name was spelled correctly. That that's always a plus. <laughs> Um, I, I sure am going to miss the, uh, the 1 a.m. meetings. Uh, so tonight, uh, I think, Jason, it's, I'm allowed to filibuster a bit. So if we can uh, maybe have a discussion about, you know, Star Wars Episode Nine plot lines. Um, and then after a couple hours, I'll turn the floor over to Carl Wente to speak for a few hours. Uh, but if you mention you know, Jar Jar Binks, we immediately go to recess. It, please don't say that. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not a Jar Jar guy. But no, in, in all seriousness, uh, thank you. Uh, first and foremost, I want to thank my, my wife and my daughter. Um, as the resolution mentioned, um, it, it is a lot of time away from the family. Uh, I've been volunteering now uh, in one way or, the, or another with the city for 10 years, and my daughter's 10. So uh, I, I don't know why I started right when she was born. It was just kind of like, oh, kind of a, a weird timing of the decision. But um, I'm very glad that I, I did what I, uh, I, I got involved with the community. Uh, it's really opened my eyes to how wonderful Livermore is. And I, I, I wouldn't have met 99% of the people in this room hadn't I volunteered on the Beautification Committee 10 years ago. 
than Planning Commission and now Council. It really, it's truly a great community. There are just so many wonderful people here who have the best interest of Livermore uh, in their hearts. I'm, I'm proud to have met everybody. Um, I want to thank the, the residents who voted me in and those who didn't vote me in. I still like you anyway. Um, you know, the, the three major items that I talked about uh, when I was running was, uh, you know, finishing BART to Livermore, uh, finishing the council chambers, and completing downtown. And that kind of sort of made my decision easy uh, when, you know, all three are, are on their way. So uh, I, I looked at it, and I looked at my workload during my day job. Uh, most people don't realize that when we have the 1.30 in the morning meetings, you know, I'm back at work the next day. And my day job, I've had back-to-back -back council meetings where I've been 1.30 here, and then the next day I'm presenting at another <coughs> council meeting, followed up by additional night meetings. So uh, it's been quite the, 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 the slug uh, for the last four years. I do want to thank uh, three staff members uh, in particular. Uh, Livermore staff, you all have been great. Uh, just absolutely wonderful. Uh, returning phone calls, providing information. I mean, each and every one of you, I can see that it's, it's really in your hearts to, to work for this community. So thank you uh, to the city staff in general. But three in particular, uh, Mark, uh, I wanted to thank you for your guidance and your sense of humor. I was going to compare each staff member to a different Star Wars character tonight, but you know, and I thought, hey, Mark's a perfect Yoda. I mean, because he's he's always just gently reminding us of things and kind of guiding us along the way. It's 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 so I, I really appreciate uh, his his knowledge and sense of humor. It's like we were raised watching the same films, or maybe I saw him in reruns. I don't know. Um, I also wanted to thank uh, Jason for being you know very patient and very thorough. Uh, it, it's just, it's been a pleasure to work with you and to listen to my crazy ideas and, and kind of feel like when my daughter was six and I'd be like, why, why, why? And Jason always had the perfect answers, so thank you. And I also want to do uh, call out Paul Spence. Um, again, Paul and Jason were the uh, staff members when I was on the planning commission. And, you know, I feel like I ran just to follow them because uh, when they were bumped up to council, I really missed working with you guys. And Paul, I, I have never seen you angry. I've never even seen you slightly annoyed. It's just, I mean, he's one of the most pleasant people to work with. Um, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a great pleasure serving with every council member here and the, the previous council members uh, a few years back. So thank you uh, very much. Um, you know, to wrap it up, uh, you know, I, I plan to keep staying involved. Uh, I, I've always referred to myself as a local government nerd. Uh, but I understand those who serve up here who kind of take a, a long break afterwards because you really do burn out with a lot of the work. But it's just in me to serve. So I'll probably be applying for, you know, some committee or wearing a yellow jacket at an event or, or something just to stay involved. Um, yeah, I just, you know, thank you very much. Um, the one accomplishment, though, that wasn't mentioned here that I, I really want to highlight and I think it was one of the proudest moments up here was um, suggesting that we adopt the Livermore tar plant as our city flower. <laughs> so that, yeah, I got, I got hands waved for that one. Um, that, that one will always stick with me. It was, uh, I, I think it was just a, a, a great time to do it, and I'm proud to be the one to suggest that. So uh, I, I will close, though, with uh, welcoming Trish Monroe, um, a little preemptive before you're sworn in. So welcome, Council Member Monroe. I want to say that uh, first. And, and Part of my decision-making process for deciding not to run, really the, the nail in the coffin for me was when I met Trish and got to know her better. <laughs> well, I mean, not to put it that way, but the nail in the coffin for me not to run with, okay. You know, as you can tell, I have a few notes. I've never really planned speeches here. I've always just spoke from the heart. You know what I mean, Trish? No offense, but knowing that somebody like Trish was running and could do such a great job, it gave me such a comfort level to step back for a little while, you know, maybe see what happens in four years when my district comes up. I don't know. I've always sort of played it by ear, but thank you, Trish, for deciding the run, to run, and congratulations. Thank you. So I would just like to um, acknowledge that it's, it's been four years with Stephen. I can't believe it's gone that quickly. We've gone through a lot. And um, it's been a great experience working with Stephen. Um, 
he's brought a different perspective, and I've learned a lot from our uh, conversations. As the mayor mentioned, we haven't always agreed on things, but S Stephen has always been available for a really good conversation about the pros and cons of various issues. It's been very valuable. So I'm truly going to miss you on the uh, as, as a colleague here. It's been a um, just great. And I'm hoping that um, you reappear up here uh, you know, for the for the benefit of Livermore. So I'm I'm looking forward to that, and I I just um, just very as you said heartfelt. It's been um, you've made uh, the the work up here a lot easier. It's difficult, and working with you has been uh, great. So thank you. Yeah, we all bring uh, different life experiences to these positions, and I think uh, one of the a unique part of Stephen is the fact that he's a staff member who works, for the, who works for the city of San Ramon, was on the planning commission here and then elected the city council. So he's had a wealth of experience and I've enjoyed hearing his perspective because it's oftentimes, um, you know, things that I haven't thought of because I don't have the same perspective he has from his experience working in San Ramon and being on planning commission. So. I've always appreciated his points of view and uh, will certainly miss him, but looking forward to working with uh, Trish Monroe, too, as she gets sworn in this evening. So, again, thanks very much, Stephen, for all your support over the last couple of years. Well, I'll be much simpler. <clears throat> I first met Steve when I was a director at LARPD, and uh, he came down to judge a Halloween costume contest uh, at, in front of the bankhead. And I could tell within just a few minutes that we were going to be great, great friends. So it was wonderful, just shooting off one-liners, one after another. And uh, the Star Wars references were in abundance even then. And uh, we had a great time. It has been a pleasure working with you up here. I hope to uh, have you up here for an appointment somewhere, some, whenever you feel comfortable with it, or whatever works for you. It's been a pleasure. I've learned a lot from you about city planning. Uh, when you have to combine what you know about that with what we'd have to do up here to make sure things get done. I, I imagine there's some conflicting stuff sometimes, but uh, you handle it with extreme grace, and uh, it's been wonderful working with you. Thank you so much for your service. Yeah, the first time I met you, it was at a, uh, uh, a meet and greet when I was running for mayor at former council member uh, Doug Horner's house. And uh, you had a tremendous interest in uh, how the city was operating, and that's when you later got onto the planning commission. And uh, have been, you've been doing great work uh, with the city, and I, I greatly appreciate that. I uh, recognize the tremendous time and effort because uh, uh, recognize that you are a staff member of the agency, and you know I, I've been there when you got a two o'clock meeting letting out here, and you got to get up at five o'clock in the morning to go to work. So. I certainly appreciate the commitment and the passion that you brought. And uh, certainly thank you very much and look forward to working with you in the future in whatever capacity. Thank you. I guess I have to move on, don't I? All right. Um, and let me just say, Dianandra Bacigalupii, the Livermore Tar Plant. Because <laughs> that, that, will, that will be yours. It exists nowhere else in the world just shows what a remarkable community we have. The great people here and other resources nowhere else in the world. And you recognize that. So you'll always have that. And so will we. Thank you. With that, um, we're going to move on to the Citizens Forum. These are items that are not on the, on the agenda. And the City Council cannot deliberate nor take action um, uh, during the Citizens Forum. Uh, so with that, uh, Greg Scott, Neil Herrick, uh, Jacob Anderson. Mr. Scott. Okay, come on. Good evening, Honorable Mayor Machan, Livermore City Council, City of Livermore staff, video land people, and the people in this room, welcome. I am Greg Scott. I speak on homelessness in Livermore. I want to thank the City of Livermore for, as I requested in the last City Council, for returning 
uh, at least some of um, the homeless man Richard French's items um, two days after I spoke to you at the city council. Um, he told me that 80% of his belongings reached were returned from his bicycle trailer, but not his bicycle trailer. I don't know if those other items have been returned since. Uh, so we only spent two nights out there without his bedding. Um, I don't really understand why all of his items weren't returned. It just seems malicious to me. Um, Mr. French, as I understand it, is a United States Marine Corps veteran. Uh, why we treat our veterans like this, I don't really understand, but I have direct experience with that because my brother is a Vietnam vet. He fought in the Tet Offensive with the 101st Airborne. Uh, two of his platoon of 32 came back to this fairly ungrateful country intact. Um, I think we should treat our veterans better, such as Mr. French. And by the every day I learn how we treat the homeless and, and I don't understand it. I don't understand the game here with uh, what we're doing about the homeless. Um, it's Christmas. In the Judeo-Christian realm, uh, the parents of Jesus were told there's no room at the inn. Perhaps uh, Joseph and Mary should have stood in the roadway and uh, waited for the city of Bethlehem to eventually do something for them. All I needed was patience, perhaps, uh, except for one imperative of urgency that Mary had. They couldn't do that, apparently. So luckily, they got a manger. In 2,000 years, what have we learned from this? Oh, we're so much more clever, aren't we? Not only do we tell the homeless there's no room at the end, we tell them there's no place on the planet. That's wonderful. The question is, you still can't answer from even the first time I talked here a year before September, where do you expect the homeless to go? Okay, um, to incoming uh, Councilwoman Trish Monroe, congratulations. In Ms. Monroe's platform was consideration for the vulnerable. This is gonna be interesting in regards to the homeless, especially the resources and how they're used. Constantly I hear in this room how there's not enough resources. That's interesting because there's just over a million dollars in human services grants. And also, I hear about how it's a regional problem. Yes, it is. I don't know what that has to do with it, but Livermore is also a part of it. Abode Services gets housing for people. Yes, in some of these housing, a long-time uh, homeless person, Annie, who's in a wheelchair, was got, she got housing in Newark. I guess there was no housing in Vladivostok, Siberia. I don't really understand that, but um, you know, we should really be getting shelter for women. It's Christmas, and we really need to be doing a better job here in this community for the homeless. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scott. And uh, uh, as was pointed out when we did the point in time uh, uh, homeless survey uh, several years ago, we found out, we learned that over 90% of the homeless veterans were not receiving the benefits from the federal government to which they were entitled. And this is an issue that I have taken up with the U.S. Conference of Mayors and with the VA, that they should be getting their services. And one of the initiatives that we have started here is to try to connect those servicemen to the benefits to which they are entitled. And there was a backlog for the VA of over 38,000 cases just out of the Oakland office. And that's the, the veterans' benefits are federal, and we need to connect them to the benefits to which they are entitled, and we continue to work to achieve that. So thank you for bringing that to our awareness. Uh, Neil Herrick, uh, Jacob Anderson, Carl Winty. Mr. Herrick. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, staff, as we, <clears throat> excuse me, as we look back on 2018, I have been very disappointed in the way this council, the staff, have been treated by the citizenry. I have listened to the audience tell me that people that don't live within the city boundaries should not be allowed to address the council. I have seen this council berated over innuendo, not facts, rumors. I have seen this staff put together a great deal of time, effort, only to have it dismissed. Um, I've had family members who have fought for the rights that every one of us have in this audience. And I do not appreciate having this council treated the way it is. I respect each and every one of you 
I think each and every one of you has done a fantastic job over the two, four, six years that I have known you. I think we need to be very grateful for the society we live in. Many of us have, as this gentleman has said, things that other people will not have, do not have. We have a duty as citizens to keep the council informed and monitored, but we have a duty to respect this council. And this council and every member of the city staff, every city employee, deserves the respect of the citizenry of Livermore. And I apologize for the way some of you have been treated. I am also sad that some of you are not considering continuing on with the city. I understand this has been a vicious election from city all the way through to governor. I wish you would reconsider. I do not want the bullies of this world to push aside good people with good views, honest people who care, who are compassionate. I do not want this gentleman left out in the cold with his people because special interests have pushed people aside. Um, to Mr. Winty, I think he is a fantastic speaker for what goes on. I would hate to think that Mr. Winty and I become the only two people in this town who speak every week, who care and compassion. Mr. Winty is a wonderful speaker and a compassionate person. I tend to roll on and on and on, so that would not be good for the citizen, right? I do appreciate everyone. I don't mean to be emotional. It's been a rough day. Um, thank you. You all have my respect. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Herrick. Thank you very much. Jacob Anderson, Carl Winty, John Stein. Before I get started, uh, I just want to say I agree with Neil um, and what he said. But on a little bit of a lighter side, uh, today is the Laos Council meeting with Councilmember Spadowski. Um, he's done a great job growing his beard out for charity. Um, he would say it makes him look more Wookiee-like. <laughs> but an Ewok might be a better comparison. Oh. <laughs> um, oh. Councilmember Spadowski has served his community, and he will be missed uh, almost as much as he will miss his Councilmember Swivel Chair. Um, <laughs> I know that one thing he won't miss is being called an old white guy. Um, he's not that old. He just looks that way. <laughs> <laughs> I know Councilmember Spadowski will be glad to have some time back. Um, after four and eight years, he can now start using Twitter again. His last tweet wasn't that long ago. It was November 5th, 2014. <laughs> uh, he, he will be missed, but in his years of service, he made one mistake. A few years ago, Councilmember Spadowski interviewed me for the Community Assessment Management Program Committee and decided that out of the many applicants, I would not make the final cut. <laughs> Thankfully, it worked out for the best. Shortly after that, um, I was to be married and time was in short supply. So probably for the best. <laughs> All kidding aside, I want to thank this council for their work over the past two years. Uh, I know that <laughs> your love and hard work for the city a lot of times goes unnoticed. I appreciate your endurance from the attacks of being an elected official, probably more than most other city councils. I am encouraged to see most of you returning. Councilmember Spadowski, I am deeply appreciative to you for your hard work, your generosity, your thoughtfulness. It has been a blessing to have such a city policy nerd on the council. Thank you so much for your service. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Uh, Carl Winty and John Stein. Honorable Mayor and Council, thank you all for what you do for service. City staff, everybody that's back there, a lot of faces that are part of the process of good government. I thank you. I salute you. I'm humbled by the work that we continually do. Mr. Herrick, thank you for the kind words. 
of the people, for the people, by the people, for we are a democratic republic, right? And we elect people to govern and to appoint as it comes through. So I am humbled by our system. We should all celebrate a elegant and peaceful transition of power, if you will, as we swear in new elected representatives. Trish, rock on, good on ya. I never said old white men. I did say six-year-old white men. So like, I want to be clear, it wasn't. I didn't call you all old. But we celebrate the diversity. And uh, the, the people that were reelected, that shows the trust that the electorate has in you. And I thank you for your continual treasure of that trust. Trish Monroe, the newfound trust is placed upon you to act in the best interest to the best of your ability of the city of Livermore, and I have great faith in your ability to do so, to put your intellect to the work of good government, fundamentally serving. So I thank you and salute you. Um, govern well, appoint well. This is what it is. So I also want to say that I wrote a card that said all consent items. I was trying to save paper as I'm putting in all the cards, but I'm just going to do it right now instead and say thank you to all of the work that goes into it. Again, Mr. Alessio, the, the volume of work that has to go in to everything that's there. And I'm not just, uh, I'm not just pointing at you, same with you, like you do smile most all the time, right? It's like, <laughs> I bet there's a bad day out there somewhere. Uh, Steve, I was so ready for you to go to two other Star Wars characters as you went down the line, but you stopped at Yoda, but maybe to be continued on another discussion. Um, also, want to point out the many thanks to those that have to have to put on a bulletproof vest to go to work and serve to make the community safer. I think Mr. Chief is back there as well. So again, thank you, thank you, thank you all for what you do as we go through. Again, let's celebrate a beautiful, elegant transition of power as new people are elected to serve and make this world, our city, a better place. I'd like to point out that my name is Carl Wente and I live just outside of the city. Right? I'm not even a resident, but. This town is my town, a town that I love so much. Unify, bringing things together. So that's what we should be about. Um, I am going to humbly apologize, Trish, that I'm not going to be able to sit here and watch you get sworn in because I'm going to skedaddle my way on out as opposed to getting to the end of this meeting. But again, I just want to celebrate our democratic republic, celebrate that the incumbents have one by a good resounding margin, celebrate the increase of diversity with Trish coming on board. So thank you all for what you do. Anybody that's part of the city staff and the likes, thank you so much for what you do. Perfect timing. <clears throat> and since the uh, comments came up about uh, old and white, uh, you'll notice the old white beard is gone. Uh, it's, uh, uh, with the uh, end of uh, November beard, uh, it was also the end of the beard itself. Uh, however, there is still an opportunity to donate to the Shop with a Cop uh, through the City of Livermore, uh, Livermore Police Department, and also an opportunity to uh, <coughs> support the Rooms of Hope, uh, which is at the First Street Ale House, uh, uh, providing uh, rooms for critically ill children. So uh, uh, those are still available and still uh, worthy of your support. Uh, and the reason for the beards. So uh, with that, uh, thank you. Mr. Stein. Uh, John Stein, 1334 Cathy Court. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you and echo the comments of the previous speakers and uh, particularly uh, uh, the, the leaving council member who can now begin working on becoming more Yoda-like in appearance, <laughs> if not wisdom, like the rest of us. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, with that, I'm going to close the uh, Citizens Forum, moving on to the uh, consent calendar. Um, I uh, do have one card on consent calendar. Um, are there any other items that anyone wishes to pull on consent for discussion? Okay. Um, with that, uh, Mr. Stein, uh, 4.13. That is the... Uh, uh, one million dollars uh, for the acquisition of uh, 137 Road. acres on Doolin Canyon Road. Um, I think this is a great idea and I heartily endorse it. Uh, I think uh, the city has accumulated significant amounts of resources and it, it's time to start expending them on acquiring open space. And this is a particularly important piece of open space. Uh, first, because it would be nice to acquire all of the undeveloped land in Doolin Canyon to maintain an entire ecosystem and watershed. 
and second because it firms up the urban growth boundaries between Dublin and uh, Livermore. Urban growth boundaries by themselves do not preserve open space. Uh, they merely delay development. It's only by acquiring either easements or property in fee simple that the uh, uh, open space is buffered and protected. And I urge you to begin acquiring uh, land in the central uh, area of North Livermore. Uh, on the south side, we have a lot of uh, signs that say protected in perpetuity, this property protected in perpetuity, put up by the Tri-Valley Conservancy. We have not yet begun to see those in North Livermore. And there's increased pressure for things like uh, uh, solar farms, uh, temples, cemeteries, schools. Uh, and it's important that we acquire control of this property. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Stern. There are ner urban nerds all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to um, say that I agree with Mr. Stein. And on the, I'm a member of the Altamont Open Space Committee. And we do have a lot of money that's accumulated. And our issue is finding willing sellers. <clears throat> so one of the things I um, uh, instigated was actually the Open Space Committee being more proactive in trying to find them. And the first step is doing a uh, sort of a strategic study of what lands are would we like to target. Now, it's a delicate matter because you, you can't influence it from the government, but uh, it's too much. But we do want to have in advance an idea of what are the top priorities. And should something become available, we want to be in a position to move as quickly as possible. And the lands. Um, will only get more expensive over time and more rare. So we are trying to do what we can uh, to understand where we should be targeting. And we've been actually hired a uh, consultant to help us uh, do the evaluation of, given across all the dimensions of how you think about it, which are the top priorities. So we are doing what we can in that respect. Well, thank you. Um, and I think uh, 4.13 recognizes the ongoing continuing commitment uh, by the city to preserve open space uh, in, uh, in perpetuity. Uh, if there's nobody else has any questions on uh, the consent calendar, I've just got a couple of questions that I'd like to run through. Uh, 4.08, uh, there's going to be, uh, this is the uh, uh, work being done along uh, uh, the Robertson Park mitigation site. And the Zone 7 is going to be doing some significant work. In fact, they had a, uh, uh, a workshop last week on uh, uh, the Madeiras Parkway. Uh, is there any opportunity co to coordinate uh, the efforts uh, on these? Is it, is it the same location? Uh, similar locations, although we did take a look at the timing on that. The city is uh, required to do our mitigation work before Zone 7 anticipates beginning theirs. They're probably a year and a half to two years out. Uh, OK, because they're talking about lowering the, uh, the, the trails. Right. Which almost seems counterintuitive if you're worried about flooding, but that's right. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's there's engineers that study this a lot more than I do, so I, I'm trusting them to uh, to get this right. Right. Um, also on uh, uh, 4.11, that's the uh, the funding on the crossing guards. Uh, I'm on the Alameda County Transportation Commission, and this is going to be coming back to ACTC uh, because there was a, a free student bus pass. Uh, that was re initially proposed, uh, and there may be some funding there for, for crossing guards. So as we look at this in the future, something just to, to keep in mind when this does come back. And you know, since I'm there, I'll, I'll let you know when it comes back. And, um, uh, and just to speak to 4.12, uh, and that's the Department of Justice uh, grant. And that was almost uh, um, uh, well, like $100 per page of uh, staff report. It was two, uh, 200 pages and uh, uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars. But I think that that's money that's going to be very well spent. Uh, and uh, glad that we were able to collaborate with the, the school district to, uh, to make that happen. And it's just hope that they can uh, you know, provide more funding uh, and continue to work the grants from, uh, from Department of Justice. So we're, thank you very much for, the, uh, for putting all that together. Um, with that, I'll entertain a motion for the consent calendar. Okay. Uh, consent calendar moved by uh, Vice Mayor Warner uh, and uh, seconded by... Uh, I'll second. Okay. Seconded by Councilmember Carling. Uh, all in favor of the motion? 
Aye. Aye. Any opposed? The passage unanimously. Um, moving on to uh, uh, public hearings, we have none. Um, matters initiated and uh, uh, committee reports. Um, we didn't do this last time because we were at 1.30 in the morning. It was, it was so late it was early. Um, so uh, anything to uh, any committee? Just uh, committee since reports? last time we had the uh, Laftus Finance and Administration meeting that I attended and uh, got high marks for our CAFR, our uh, pretty much a, an, anal an annual analysis of how our uh, Laftus finances have been, and they've been outstanding. So it is good to report that. We had a meeting also at LAVTA uh, on the 3rd, let's say 3rd, um, and uh, which we rolled out the CAFR for the rest of everybody and then had some personnel evaluations to attend to. So uh, that's that's where I've been. Okay. Councilor McCarling? Yes, thanks. So um, early in November, we, several of us, uh, were participating in the groundbreaking for the Veterans Way road that's going in on the... Uh, Catalyst site, so that's a road that will run from Livermore to uh, to L Street. So that was a lot of fun to uh, see that moving forward. And there's now a fence up there, so there's for storage of equipment and so on. So that's moving forward. November seventh, I subbed for uh, my colleague to the far right uh, at the East Bay Community Energy meeting. Mercifully short meeting that e that night, so uh, it was pretty easy to handle for. Uh, Councilmember Spadowski on the 14th participated in a stop waste meeting and on the 15th the mayor and I went to a dinner celebration uh, honoring the volunteers uh, LPD volunteer group which provided a great service to this community uh, see I, uh, Mr. Scott brought up a point about Mr. French's uh, Possessions, and I, we did get a memo from the chief. And I wondered, did you speak to Mr. Scott about that, chief, at all? Maybe um, you could uh, speak to Mr. Scott about that at some point, so he knows what happened to the rest of uh, Mr. French's possessions. Okay, thank you very much. Uh. <laughs> Was that a pause? I mean, I did have a list there tonight we, of matters. There we, okay. There's a city bird that I would like adopted. There's a city tree <laughs> that I would like adopted. Um, a city rock, perhaps? A city, how, how did you know? Uh, a city okay. wine? No, I'm joking. I, I don't have anything. <laughs> Last chance. Okay. All right. Vice Mayor Warner. Okay. <clears throat> the last time I can say that. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I guess so. Um, well, maybe I don't know. The uh, let's see a, a few things. So when the last in uh, first out is, is attended the uh, menorah lighting uh, on Saturday, and that was very. Uh, I was honored to be invited to do that. I think it was very uh, good for the uh, city to celebrate that. The um, went to a, a Rotary Club uh, honoring uh, Wes Morgan for the um, for the. Um, Every 15 minutes, and he's one of the outstanding traffic policemen we've had, and done a whole lot against the drunk drivers. So, um, and of course, that wasn't the first time I met him because he's a neighbor of mine, or was a neighbor of mine on Chateau, and he actually stopped me not for drunk driving, but I had a tail light out on my car. So he was a really, he's a great guy, and has done a lot for the uh, for the uh, community. I've uh, gone to. Um, LDI meetings. So we had a um, the intergovernmental meeting, and I think there was an LCAC meeting, but nothing that I would uh, bring to attention here. But I do have um, a couple of matters initiated, as I always do. And I was talking earlier with Mark, and, and I don't think he was complaining because I don't do it enough. But um, so the two things. And one is now that we've made the major decisions with respect to the downtown, and we've selected not only where things are going to go, but who we're going to partner with, I would like to request that the um, uh, staff come back by the end of January with a schedule of what will get built when. I think a number of people have been asking me this, and I think it's important for people to understand there are some things that are going to get done fairly quickly by the spring. I was just mentioning, uh, or it was just mentioned the Veterans Way and some other things, some in the intermediate time frame and some much longer. 
and I think it would be good just to be able to uh, set expectations. And I think we'll have clarity on the short-term ones, but the longer-term ones, not so much. So I th would ask the community to understand it's just a tentative schedule, but it's something for people can kind of wrap their minds around as to what's going to happen when, with the thought that uh, depending on reality it always sets in, you know, what the schedule could change, especially in the out years. So the, and so is that, do I have three heads on that, or five, I guess? And the staff is okay with the time frame? So the other uh, item I'd like to initiate, and I actually got this from uh, Council Member Spadowski, is that we use um, newsletters and we print them and it, there, there's usually a time delay and a lot of cost. And so I would like <clears throat> to ask staff to come back, <clears throat> excuse me, with some um, options and thoughts on how we could more effectively use social media, especially advertising, to get the word out to the community uh, when various things are happening. And I just mentioned the schedule. So when something uh, is done or we're going to celebrate something um, groundbreaking, that if you get the word out through that. So if you just come back with uh, what the options are, they'd be, appreciate that. Okay. All right. Um, so on uh, November 4th, I attended uh, Ashton Kuhn's uh, Eagle Scout Court of Honor. Uh, and uh, on the 7th of uh, uh, November, one of my favorite things is uh, helping people hand out their money. Uh, and the uh, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, excuse me, Lawrence Livermore uh, National Security uh, provides uh, tens of, actually over $100,000 in grants to the community uh, to local nonprofits. Uh, and this is one of uh, Lab Director Bill Goldstein's favorite things is uh, to be able to support the community and the many nonprofits that are doing tremendous work here. Uh, the room was packed, uh, and there's a lot of great work that's being done uh, that is being supported by the Lawrence Livermore National Security. Um, on uh, November 9th, I was honored to make a presentation uh, on Livermore's efforts uh, in graffiti abatement at the uh, National Conference uh, for Zero Graffiti International in Sacramento. Uh, on uh, the 10th of November, I attended uh, John uh, Molitoris' Eagle Scout Court of Honor and presented him with a certificate of recognition from the city of Livermore. Um, on the uh, 14th was the Alameda County Mayor's Conference uh, in Albany. The uh, 15th, as uh, Councilmember Carling mentioned, was the uh, uh, Police Department Volunteer Appreciation Dinner. Uh, we really rely upon them because they do a tremendous amount of work uh, to, to keep this com community safe and secure. Yeah, and on uh, the 17th, uh, I uh, was there for Lisa Hayes' 100th birthday party. Uh, so light bulbs and ladies last longer in Livermore. <laughs> so some of the, the, some of the fun stuff. And uh, the 19th was the uh, Alameda County Transportation Commission I-580 Express Lane. Uh, and also the Planning Policy and Legislative Committee where we got a number of, of different updates. Uh, and with that, I have no uh, uh, matters uh, to initiate. I, I did mention the poplar trees along uh, Holmes last time around. Um, but uh, uh, with that, uh, no more matters for consideration. I will adjourn. Oh, I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. We, have, we still have to do that. Okay. It gets complicated here. Okay. So 7.01. Resolution accepting the canvas of votes of the general municipal election of November 6th. Did we actually get the final canvas? Okay. Uh, so I, I take it nothing changed. Uh, so uh, for the mayor, uh, John Marchand was elected for a two-year term. Uh, Councilmember Warner uh, was elected to a four-year term. And Trish Monroe uh, was also elected to a four-year term. Uh, and uh, Measure U uh, was overwhelmingly uh, defeated. That was a as an initiative to require the city of Livermore to uh, regulate the cost of health care. Uh, so with that, I need a, 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 a motion to uh, adopt the canvas. Sure, I'll, I'll move approval of the canvas. Okay, a uh, motion made by uh, Councilmember Spadowski. I'll second that. Uh, seconded by Councilmember Coomber. Uh, any discussion on that motion? All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Oh, and you, Aye. Um, discussion of the motion? No, I, w I was just going to say is that those four-year terms are as at large because we're making this transition into the uh, district elections. That's right. So those are at large, and then in four years, those revert to uh, uh, district elections. Good catch. All right. Thank you. With that, uh, now I will uh, adjourn uh, sine dia uh, to, uh, and now we have the <laughs> delivery. Oh, no, now we have the delivery of the certificates to uh, the election and the administration of the oath of office uh, for the council members that are, did, sorry to panic everybody there. There's still a lot more to go on. Uh, but yes, uh, sine, uh, sine dia means without day. So we just, uh, we're not setting a day, it's just uh, adjourning into the next uh, uh, procedure. So we're going to uh, uh, come down here for the oath of office so we can grab our respective oaths of office. I'd like to call forward John Marchand and Trish Monroe and also Bob Warner. <coughs> So now uh, we will call to order the uh, newly installed council. I call this meeting to order of the uh, uh, Livermore City Council uh, on this uh, December 10th meeting, uh, part two. Uh, so with that, uh, we are going to quickly go into closed session. Uh, so feel free to hang on. And then after closed session, uh, we'll be back uh, for Citizens Forum. Uh, and then matters for consideration. Okay, great. Welcome back to, uh, I guess this is part two and a half of the uh, December 10th meeting of the Livermore City Council. Uh, you notice there's a slight change up here. We've rearranged ourselves, and I'd like to welcome uh, our new council person, uh, Trish Monroe. So, council member, welcome aboard. 
And uh, with that, uh, I have the uh, you have a second opportunity for the Citizens Forum. This uh, uh, again, this is an item that is not on the agenda, uh, and the City Council cannot deliberate nor take action. Uh, but I do have a half dozen cards here: uh, Asa Strout, uh, Greg Scott, uh, Ann Brown. Good evening, uh, Asa Strout. Um, I saved my card for this moment because I more, more, more wanted to say congratulations to Trish in a more formal capacity now that she's actually up there sitting, so congratulations. And I also wanted to say that um, Unify Live More is very excited for the next two years to work with this council to you know, continue to work to improve this great city and to advocate for Live More issues. Um, with you guys. So we are going to hold your guys' feet to the fire to some degree on some issues. So hopefully we can all work together and continue going forward. Thank you. Thank you. And I just realized I uh, skipped here. Was the, uh, let me back up a little bit. Uh, with respect to the closed session, was there any reportable action taken uh, in the closed session? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No, there was not. Okay, great. It, you know, it's all procedure. You got to make sure we do all this stuff. Keep it all legal and legit. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, Greg Scott and Brown, uh, Emily Bloomer. Mr. Scott. Greg Scott, I speak on homelessness. Uh, we aren't going to solve the homelessness problem unless we have the chutzpah and political will to do so. And we don't seem to have that. Uh, we aren't going to solve the homelessness problem unless we have some understanding here about homelessness. We don't seem to have that either, either by the city council, by the city staff, or by the Human Services Commission. And I've attended almost every meeting of the Human Services Commission this year. And frankly, the Human Services Commission is fairly clueless on homelessness. What are we going to do? Um, I've been suggesting since um, September of 2017 that we could at least have like a safe parking area. The city staff held a seminar on homelessness at Asbury Church and one homeless woman said that she drives with her precious resources to Union City three to four nights a week for safe parking. Well, Union City can have safe parking, but the city of Livermore can't. Uh, come on. You know, uh, we can do better than this. Um, if the scope of homelessness is too much for us, then why don't we narrow the scope? We now have female representation on the city council. Why don't we narrow it to the point of least getting the women shelter out there? What we're doing is addressing such a small part of the homeless situation compared to the, what the scope is this is the problem. Can't we at least get the women into shelter out there? Um, in not understanding that, if you, if you discount me on the understanding, then go talk to Lee out there between First and Railroad Avenue. He's been out there for years. He's rotting. You know, the pathway uh, it, for the homeless is the pathway uh, of death by despair. Death by despair is a coinage by economist Ann Case and 2015 Nobel laureate Anton Deaton. Uh, it, it's not very promising. Uh, if you discount uh, what I'm saying about your understanding of homelessness, then go talk to Brian. He's sitting just south of Pete's Coffee on South Livermore on a pretty regular basis. If you discount me on your understanding of homelessness, one woman over a year ago spoke to you, spoke to the city council, and she said, she a long time, um, grew up here, long time Livermore resident, uh, was in the US Navy for 10 years. At that time, she spoke about being, living in her car for five years. She's still in her car. It's over a year later. She's been six years in her car. And what I hear from city staff, eventually, patience, I know a man that's been in his car here for 17 years. With him is a woman with grand mal epilepsy. She's been in the car with him for four years. This is insane. It's insane. Thank you, Mr. Scott. Ann Brown, Emily Bloomer, Stacy Swanson. Hello, I'm Ann Brown of Livermore. Congratulations to our council. Thank you very much. I'm here as a co-leader for the newly formed Tri-Valley Chapter of the Citizens Climate Lobby. And uh, we are focused on passing legislation at the federal level that will 
slow and, and eventually stop devastating climate change and reduce our carbon output. But we're also looking for leadership on our city level. And we understand that we have a climate action plan that was authored in 2012. And we would like to um, find out more about the plan. Um, has it been reviewed? How can we learn about the progress toward the goals of that plan? Does it need some updates, given the new information that has uh, ensued in the last six years? Uh, we think the time is right to bring our climate action plan to the attention of our citizens. And we'd like to know how we can partner with you to help promote the goals of the plan. Uh, so that's our beginning foray into what we hope will be a very fruitful partnership with the city council. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Uh, Mr. Spence, is the climate action plan posted on the website? I, I believe so. I, 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 I will think definitely I've seen it up check there. It. Yeah. But could you, could you check on that? It should be posted on the website because uh, I remember working on that. Yes, we'll double check. Great, thank you. Uh, Emily Bloomer, Stacy Swanson. Oh, just one thing. Not only is the uh, plan on the website, but the but we've had updates. That I think if you could put the the update package on there as well, that'd be helpful. Sure, and we are looking at additional updates this next year, so we can certainly provide some information to Ms. Brown. Great, thank you. Okay, now Emily Bloomer, <laughs> back up, and Stacy Swanson. Hello, and congratulations, uh, Trish, on your appointment. We're excited to have you representing us as women. Um, J Mayor uh, John um, Mc... I can't say your name. Marchand. I'm nervous. That's okay. A, um, deep breath. We're all friendly up here. It's all okay. a great place. Great community. I would like to thank you for your effort on removing the duck pond in Springtown once again. It is a joy to me to drive past it and just watch as the geese have come in and it's flourishing. We thank you for the open space. Um, in I made a deal with my husband. He said I could come to the open, this meeting as long as I extended an invitation to you to come to the Wetland Preserve, which is right across the street from Pound Park. And it's an area that you can go and you can hike in this preserve. And it is a beautiful place. My children and I love it. This time of year, we go out there in our galoshes and we're able to really enjoy the nature there. With your biology background, we think you would really love it but we also are really wanting to help preserve this as a wetland preserve right now it's also a BMX biking thing and there are some pretty awesome mountains as my children call them that have been built in the preserve um, we would like to know how we as citizens can maintain it as a wildlife refuge but also be able to accommodate the youth who have obviously taken a liking to the space as well so that is all. Thank you okay. very much. Okay. Well, great. Um, shoot me an email because uh, <laughs> yeah. I've been out there. It is beautiful, and I know that in the open space plan there is a wetland preserve area where the creek is, uh, and yeah, that may be tied into it. But I know that there is a uh, uh, a permanent plan to keep a wetland preserve out there. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you very much. And one of the most unusual experience that I've had as mayor uh, was after I am I'm absolutely serious about this after the uh, holiday lights and sounds parade uh, a young boy came up to the, the the podium where we were all standing and he had a duck with him uh, a, a, I guess it was his pet mallard and he came up to the uh, to the stage and asked me what happened with the ducks and the geese from the Springtown uh, duck pond. And I was able to tell him with absolute confidence that all those ducks and geese uh, were rescued, that they were taken to a preserve, uh, and that they were going to live out their lives comfortably at that preserve. Um, and he seemed to be satisfied and went off on his merry way with his pet duck. But it was, uh, it was an unusual experience. Uh, but it, it ended well for everybody, so that's all good. Um, so thank you, Ms. Bloomer. And uh, Stacy Swanson. Good evening. You think Emily's nervous? You should see me. Um, 
also want to welcome Trish as, as our newly elected council person, and of course our new mayor and our reelected Bob Warner. The last meeting I was able to come to, uh, we had asked if we could maybe get some extension of the pass in the Springtown open space, uh, maybe just some gravel so that we have some walking paths during the wet. Um, and, I, and I kind of wanted to also bring up that former council members who helped preserve 85 acres in the middle of a suburban area, something that, that is very rarely done anymore. We were helped by Lorraine Turner, we were helped by Stuart Gary. We were helped by Steve Spadowski, Mr. Warner, and also Mr. Marchand, and we very much appreciate that. So we just want to kind of start creeping up on the plan, see if we can get a few things done project by project. And as my friend Connie expressed last meeting, uh, we are more than happy to help with funding. You know, bake sales, lemonade, we'll do, we'll do what we need to do. But we're very excited about having preserved that land. So thank you very much. Well, thank you, and we're going to keep uh, keep working on that. Could I ask, uh, Mr. Spence? We after she spoke last time, we we I think we asked or I asked you to look into that. Have, have you gotten any uh, update on that? Uh, I don't yet, but we will provide an update to you uh, at your next meeting. Okay, very good. Um, moving on to. Uh, uh, matters for consideration, the approval of the City Council Successor Agency 2019 calendar. So everybody's got that in their, uh, uh, in their packet on the agenda. With the, uh, uh, I noticed on the agenda, on the, uh, uh, the, in the packet, it said our first meeting was uh, um, the, uh, let's see. I actually wrote this down. Uh, but we have a meeting on the, uh, but the next meeting was the 14th of January. Um, and uh, we're adjourning tonight to our first meeting on January 7th. Which is, is that a going, workshop. It's a workshop. Is that going to be our norms and values? It is indeed. Okay. And, and I believe rules of procedure as well. So both of those items, rules of procedure and norms and values. Okay, very good. Very Because I noticed that that didn't quite agree, so we're good on that. Um, okay, so... Uh, uh, I guess the first thing I'd like to do is to uh, 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 say thanks to uh, uh, my wingman, uh, Bob Warner, uh, the uh, vice mayor up to uh, right now. Uh, done a phenomenal job the, uh, with, uh, with him working uh, sort of with everybody and bringing everybody together. Because that's really where the power of the council is, the power to, to convene, to bring the people together to find solutions. Uh, and we would not have had a solution to uh, Stockman Park uh, without uh, uh, Vice Mayor Werner. And uh, uh, the same thing with the uh, moving a lot of the veteran and senior housing down to uh, this City Hall campus. Uh, so a, a great strategist. And uh, uh, I don't know if, how many of you realize this, but I can only talk to one council member um, at a time because of the Brown Act. So I can't, uh, uh, you know, contact Bob Coomer and say, hey, uh, Councilmember Coomer, what do you think about this? And then uh, ask Councilmember Carly and Councilmember Werner or, or uh, Councilmember uh, Monroe uh, what they think about it. I can only talk to one person. So if I want to bounce any ideas off of anybody, the only person I can do that with uh, consistently is my vice mayor. And so it's a, a, a very valued position uh, on the council, a, a position of great trust. Uh, and uh, um, yeah, if, if I can't be there to do something, I depend upon my vice mayor to be there to get that done. Uh, and uh, Vice Mayor Bob Warner has just done a remarkable job. Uh, as I said, he's been a, my, uh, my wingman, my right-hand man. Uh, and with that, I'd like to present him with the uh, Proclamation, well, with a, a plaque recognizing the, uh, uh, the great service. Thank, Thank you so much. And so with that, I'm going to need a new one. <laughs> and uh, um, I certainly appreciate the fact that uh, a fellow chemist uh, has, uh, has offered to step up and, uh, and take on that role. These are... Uh, uh, 
it, it is a position of great responsibility, and I am very happy that uh, Vice Mayor Werner, uh, Vice Mayor Carling, has uh, uh, stepped up to uh, to assume that role, and I look forward to working with you very closely over the next uh, uh, the next year. And uh, who knows, with all that we've accomplished in this last year, uh, I'm really quite excited about what we'll be able to accomplish uh, in the next year and the years coming. So uh, um, we've got two years to do more great things. So Councilman, uh, Vice Mayor Carling, uh, welcome aboard. Thank you, sir. Thank you. With that, I'd like to offer uh, the vice mayor, the former vice mayor, uh, to say a few words, if you wish. I just kind of threw that on you. Yeah, that's the uh, problem of being a vice mayor. You get called on to just talk. Um, <laughs> but I, but I'll, I'll be short. I'll, I'll just say it's. Um, I've really uh, appreciated the the opportunity to be the vice mayor, and it has been a, a just a great experience up here and. And under the Brown Act, we do have to be very uh, judicious as to who we can talk to and when, and we've always honored that. And I have valued my conversations with uh, the mayor on uh, how we should proceed. And um, the council as a whole, we, we've really accomplished quite a bit in the last couple of years. And so I appreciate uh, having the opportunity to, to be in the role of vice mayor in the last year. So thank you. And I'm looking uh, forward to... Uh, Vice Mayor Carling's tenure. Uh, as the as the incoming Vice Mayor, any any comments? Any uh, no, I specific just, agendas right now? Uh, no, I think um, it's. Uh, I appreciate the the confidence that you have in me, and I look forward to working uh, with the Mayor and with the rest of the Council for that matter. But uh, I think it'll be a, a great opportunity. As my colleague uh, to my right mentioned, we have uh, still a lot of work to do. And uh, I think it's exciting for the next couple of years here in the city of Livermore. So let's all work together to move forward. Thanks. I like that sentiment. Work together and move forward. Very good. Thank you. OK, so now uh, another thing people don't really realize, uh, and uh, uh, when when they, they see us sitting up here, because I've, I've heard people say, oh, the mayor just runs two meetings a month. <laughs> um, we represent collectively, we, we represent uh, the city of Livermore's best interests on over 35 boards and commissions uh, and uh, regional agencies. So we're very busy uh, to make sure that our best interests are, uh, are, are seen to and, and are, are addressed. Uh, because as has, has been said many times, uh, if you are not at the table, you may be on the menu. Uh, so you want to make sure that you are represented at the table. Uh, so um, we have uh, a number of, of uh, agencies that we are representing uh, the city on. Uh, I just realized on the way over here that I had done these in a left-handed fashion and had everybody uh, appointed by their name. Uh, but what you guys need is it by the uh, the agency. So um, I, I got that back that got that uh, done. So we're good. Uh, so on the Alameda County Transportation Commission, uh, ACTC, uh, I am the uh, the delegate on that, and that uh, um, uh, and then uh, Bob Coomber is the uh, the alternate, uh, and uh, Bob Coomber is also the. Uh, Alameda County Transportation Commission Paratransit Advisory and Planning Committee uh, delegate as well. So he represents the city uh, on uh, the uh, PAPCO. Uh, Altamont Landfill Community Monitoring Committee uh, is Bob Carling, still there. Uh, Altamont Landfill Open Space Account Advisory Committee uh, is Bob Werner. Uh, and then for the Altamont Regional Traffic Authority, uh, this is an authority for the uh, uh, Tracy uh, and the connectivity between our communities. Uh, I am the delegate to that, and uh, Bob Coomber is the alternate. The uh, ACAP, that's on here. I think ACAP went away, did it not? Uh, yeah, ACAP is gone. Yes, I actually believe you are correct. They are finally gone. Yeah, because I remember uh, showing how far back that was. Jeff Williams was our representative to that, and that was. That was way back, yeah. Uh, and that uh, ultimately went away. Uh, for uh, ABAG, I did a bit of a switch here. 
uh, Trish Monroe uh, as the delegate, and uh, Bob Coomber, you'll continue to be the alternate on that. Uh, Chamber of Commerce liaison, that's, uh, that is uh, me. Uh, the East Bay Community Choice Energy Joint Powers Authority, uh, the uh, EBCE Joint JPA. Uh, I have uh, Trish Monroe for the delegate on that. Uh, Bob Carling will continue to be the alternate. Uh, Golfa, uh, I am the uh, delegate on that. And uh, Darren Greenwood is the alternate. Uh, and that's not really my choice. That's uh, required by Golfa. So it's uh, already been determined. Uh, the Intergovernmental Committee, this is a joint committee between the city, LARPD, and the school district. Um, and the, uh, 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 let's see, uh, Bob Werner is going to be the delegate on that. Uh, Trish Monroe will be the alternate. Uh, League of California Cities, East Bay Division. Uh, we have Bob Carling as the delegate uh, and Trish Monroe as the alternate. Uh, Bob, uh, see, the Livermore Amateur Valley Transit uh, Authority, LAVTA, that's the wheels bus. Uh, that's Bob Werner is going to be the delegate. Uh, Bob Coomber will also continue on as the delegate. Uh, and Bob Carling will be the alternate. Uh, the uh, Livermore Amateur Valley Water Management Agency, the uh, LAVMA Joint Powers, uh, since water has been my life, I put myself on that. Uh, and also Bob Werner as a delegate. Uh, Bob Coomber as the alternate. The uh, Livermore Area Recreation and Park District li Liaison uh, Committee, uh, moving on with the uh, uh, members of the uh, group, the intergovernmental, uh, Bob Warner will be the member on that, uh, Trish Monroe uh, also as the member. Uh, Livermore Cultural Arts Council, uh, Trish Monroe will be the delegate. Uh, Bob Werner will take my place as the alternate. Uh, Livermore Downtown Inc., uh, Bob Werner will be the liaison. Uh, Bob Carling will be the alternate. Uh, the Livermore Dublin City Council Liaison Committee, uh, I will be a delegate for that, uh, as will uh, Councilmember Coomber, and then uh, we rotate around as alternates as need be. Uh, Livermore Pleasant and City Council Liaison Committee, uh, I will be the delegate, as will uh, uh, Dr. Carling, and uh, then also the remainder of the council as, uh, as alternates as needed. Uh, the Livermore Pleasant and Fire Department Joint Powers Authority, uh, that will continue to be uh, uh, myself and Bob Werner. Uh, for the sister city committees, um, uh, I am the, the delegate for the three committees, um, only one of which has really been active recently. Uh, that's Yotsukaido, Japan. Uh, we also have Quetzaltenango, Guatemala, uh, and Shnizinsk, Russia. Uh, the delegate for uh, Yotsukaido will continue to be Bob Werner. Uh, Council Tenango, Guatemala, uh, will be uh, Trish Monroe, and uh, uh, Schnizinsk, the alternate, will be uh, uh, Bob Carling. Stopwaste.org, uh, Bob Carling will continue to be the delegate, uh, and Bob Coomber, the alternate. Uh, the tri Adolescent Health Initiative, now I understand that that... Uh, uh, is, is, is that gone away, or is that still uh, still in existence? We haven't. It hasn't met for a while. Um, have, has that? Uh, yeah, and uh, Councilmember Coomber, have you uh, ever? Okay, I believe that that has also gone away. Yes, we believe that's correct as well. Okay. Uh, okay. So, uh, hey, there's, there's, there's more spare time. Uh, uh, the Tri Valley Cities Council. That's everybody. Uh, the Tri-Valley Community Television Corporation is, uh, uh, I am the delegate for that, and uh, the city manager is the alternate. Uh, the Tri-Valley Council Affordable Housing Committee, uh, has that met any time in the uh, recent past that anybody recalls? I believe they're still around. Okay. So uh, uh, the, uh, so the Tri-Valley Council Affordable Housing Committee uh, uh, Bob Carling uh, is the delegate for that, and uh, Trish Monroe, it seemed, would be the uh, logical alternate uh, since they are both uh, part of the uh, newly formed interagency 
no, uh, the City Council Subcommittee on Homelessness. So uh, it just seems that you guys are on the Subcommittee for Homelessness. It would be reasonable that you would be on the Affordable Housing Committee since they do dovetail. Uh, the Tri-Valley San Joaquin uh, Valley Regional Rail Authority, that's the, uh, uh, the Valley Link. Uh, that uh, will continue. I will be the uh, main delegate on that. Uh, and since Bob Coomber is also handling some of the uh, transit uh, work, uh, he will be the alternate. Uh, the Tri-Valley Transportation Council uh, will be Trish Monroe as the delegate and uh, Bob Coomber as the alternate. Uh, the Water Agency's Roundtable Liaison, uh, I'll be the delegate on that. Uh, Bob Werner will also be a delegate and Bob Carling will be the alternate. Uh, the Zone 7 Intergovernmental Liaison Committee, uh, I will be the representative as will Bob Werner. Uh, the Alameda County Land Use Commission, uh, no, I'm sorry, the Alameda County Airport Land Use Commission. Uh, this is an appointment made by the Alameda County Mayor's Conference, and uh, uh, I am the uh, commission for, uh, for Livermore, as is David Dakota, our airport manager. Uh, the Alameda County Mayor's Conference, I'm the delegate to that, uh, and Vice Mayor Bob Carling will be the, uh, uh, the alternate. Uh, East Bay Regional Communication System Authority. Uh, Mark Roberts is the uh, uh, board member for that, and I am the alternate. Uh, and the Local Agency Information Commission is also a, uh, an Alameda County um, uh, uh, Mayor's Conference uh, appointment, and I, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, correction on that, I am no longer the chair. Uh, I am a, a, a one of the commissioners. Uh, also, there uh, has been some interest. We do have a liaison that goes to the, uh, the Chamber of Commerce and also to the uh, Livermore Downtown, Inc. Uh, there's been, because we've got such great partnership going on between the downtown and the uh, uh, additional housing coming in down here, there's been interest expressed in having a liaison to the Stockman's Association. Uh, now, is that something I could make a, an appointment here, or would that be something that would require uh, additional council action? Uh, because it would be uh, a voluntary liaison to the stockman. In other words, uh, a liaison to the association itself. Yes. So the uh, so the question is so yes we can you can do it essentially on our part I, our assumption is that the Stockman's Association wishes to have a liaison um, normally there's a there's the flip side of that so assuming that that happens if you appointed a liaison there would be one looking there. at the president of the Stockman's Association uh, do I have an okay I got a thumbs up from the president of the Stockman's Association so I got a thumbs up there a thumbs up uh, from here um, so if that's all it takes um, uh, I would like to appoint. Uh, uh, Councilman Werner uh, to that position because he's already developed a, a great working rapport with the Stockman's Association and uh, I look forward to other great things uh, coming from that association as well. Uh, okay, as far as the uh, appointment of council members to the City Council Subcommittee on Advisory Bodies, uh, we've just recently come off of uh, Councilmember Coomber and uh, Spadowski, I always like to have one member continue on, uh, but since that member is is no longer uh, here, uh, we go back to the next set, and that would be uh, council members. Uh, well, it'd be Councilmember Warner and uh, and myself. Uh, so it'd be Marshand and Werner for the next six months. All right. Everything clear? Okay, and get back here. Okay, so with that, um, I think we're done. Okay, so with that, um, we uh, are adjourning to the special meeting workshop on January 7th, one uh, thirty library boardroom uh, and uh, followed by the regular council meeting Monday, January 14th, 7 o'clock 
right back here. Thank you very much. Uh, happy holidays to all.